a KQED television production. I'm telling you right now, I am hungry. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by Redwood Credit Union, community banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Business and personal, online and mobile, plus nationwide ATMs. Banking for people who call this place home. Sutter Health CPMC announcing its newly opened Mission Bernal Hospital with all private rooms and comprehensive labor and delivery services. SutterHealth.org slash Mission Bernal. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with eight Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. IRG has thousands of surfaces in stock now. Surfaces. Selection. Service. IRG at MarbleCompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Former attorney Meredith Perry is now a high school counselor and a trivia buff. She loves good food, the outdoors, and will do whatever it takes, ski, sail, or hike, for a perfectly prepared dish of al dente pasta, sauced to perfection. And professional golfer and amateur chef Dennis Trixler used to skip school to watch the Galloping Gourmet on PBS. Since then, he's traveled the world eating and drinking. He's tasted it all, and now he cooks it all at home, making him a pretty picky diner. But first, office manager Jules Vu was born in Mississippi and has traveled the country mastering fire, the pit, and barbecue along the way. After four years living in San Francisco, he laments the changing city restaurant scene, preferring the old establishments that have stood the test of time. His cafeteria-style spot is a local institution. You'll recognize the name. It's Tommy's Joint. Tommy's Joint was opened by Al Pollock in 1947. He brought in his cousin, Tommy Harris, who was a social media star at the time with a radio show on KFRC. And so after uh, Tommy Harris's radio show, they come and hang out, I have good food. I'm Eddie Martin, I'm the general manager at Tommy's Joint in San Francisco, the original Hofbra. So Tommy's is the original counter service restaurant. You could come in to Tommy's when it's at its busiest, and you could be sitting down having your food in less than 20 minutes. Tommy's has had the same menu since it opened in the early 50s. It's a traditional menu with recipes from the original owners. We love a little break. So our carvers at Tommy's only have been here for some of them 30 years, old school San Francisco, and they have a very steady hand and they know exactly how much meat goes in the sandwich and they get it perfect to the ounce every time. Our regular prices beat any restaurant's happy hour. We've been making Irish coffee since the 50s, just as long as the other guys, and we sell them for half the price. There was a choice to be made two years ago, whether to tear down Tommy's Joint, build up condos, make a lot of money, or invest in Tommy's Joint and keep it open. So the current owner used to come here as a kid. He came here with his family. So he invested a lot of his money, a lot of his time and effort to keep these doors open and keep the traditions of affordable, good food going. All right, Jules, I mean, talk about an institution, what, 70 years or something this place has been there? I was just driving down Van Ness one day and saw a neon sign that said, hot corned beef and cocktails, and just pumped the brakes, like cut across three lanes of traffic because I knew I had to have some corned beef. 
So and a cocktail. I, and a cocktail, of course, right. So I went in and I thought I stepped through a wormhole, like a time machine or something, because you're in the 70s and there's like tchotchkes all over the wall and there's this neon glow that comes from the a meat carving station right there. You just smell it right when you walk in. There's a gentleman there waiting to greet you. You just tell him what you want. There's a menu right there with all these delicious, juicy, hot, peppery, smoky, tasty meats right in front of you. <laughs> it is a meat yes. palace. Yeah, it if not so much for the vegetarians. But right. I had a corned beef sandwich the first time and it was great, but you know, I had to come back and I had the turkey plate. Their turkey plate is one of the best turkey plates I've ever had in my life. Oh, nice. It's beautiful, it's golden brown, but when you taste that turkey, it tastes not like Thanksgiving, but like more like grandma's cooking or something. Well, maybe not my grandma, but <laughs> I presume somebody's grandma. It's so hearty. It comes with this beautiful side of mashed potatoes and stuffing, and then they cover it with this beautiful, silky gravy. Mm -hmm. One bite and you're in heaven, pretty much. And it pairs so well with uh, their beer. Whether and they it's have an extensive mm -hmm. beer list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then the old sign on the outside of the door, Tommy's joined with the martini glass, and you walk in, and the walls are just filled with memorabilia. Yeah. Just, yeah. Unfortunately, the food was not what I thought it would be. Maybe they had a bad day. My, my buddy had a French dip, and it was a little bit tough. I had the buffalo stew, that was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. You could taste the buffalo, it wasn't overly stewed, it was quite tasty, they serve it on a bed of rice. I might have picked maybe noodles instead, mm -hmm. but it was really quite delicious. Mm -hmm. There are pickles, which are, I love pickles, they were very nice. And then we threw in some sides, which is coleslaw, mm -hmm. that tastes like an apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. with a hint of mustard, which is quite delicious. Can, can we back up a second and talk you can. about the pickles? I love but the pickles. But I was gonna talk about the pickles. <laughs> oh, you, no, please, Let go Let Meredith in here to talk about the pickles. That was one of my favorite things. Yeah. Um, they have a big vat of pickles at the end of the counter, so after you've gone through with your tray and loaded it up with all sorts of things, there's a vat of pickles and it says take as much as you want but only take what you will eat, right. which I thought was cool. Um, but they were just delicious, really fresh, homemade, really crunchy, just kind of the right amount of sour. They were delicious. And that was your favorite part of the meal? It was my favorite part of the meal, actually. Um, they were great pickles. They were great really pickles, good. but I, I don't want to um, give short shrift to the bar scene, which is mm -hmm. very much a part of Tommy's Joint. I'd say it's half restaurant, really half bar. Yeah, the bar scene there is really cool. It's That's a nice, cool. nice spot to sit at the bar. Oh yeah. Well, and you've got so many beers on tap and yeah. so many. Yeah. So beers we had my husband from. and I went, and mm -hmm. the Giants Dodgers game was just ending, oh, yeah. so we watched the last couple innings. He was so happy because they had Grolsch beer, which is his favorite. Mm -hmm. And I had a cider, a very dry cider, mm -hmm. and it's a local San Francisco cider that's not sweet at all, and it was really good. Um, and then we had dinner. I had the corned beef plate. Uh, it came with a side of green beans. I got it with rice also and some coleslaw, which was good. Um, I was a little bit underwhelmed. Um, the meat was good. I mean, it wasn't dry. It wasn't tough. It was, it was good, and it was fine. Okay. I had a little of the horseradish which was on the table and that was really good. And what did your uh, husband have? My husband had the buffalo chili mm -hmm. with rice <laughs> and I tasted it. It was small pieces of meat, sort of pinkito beans. Mm -hmm. It was again good and I think actually for the price there the value was good. Oh you the get price it, cannot you, be beat yeah. for sure. I mean you get value there. Yeah. No question. Yeah, yeah I mean it's really about expectation. It's, mm -hmm. and, and I wasn't going to Tommy's Joint expecting a super fancy meal but it was a really good meal. The one thing I was expecting that I was surprised about was that I expected it to be really touristy and it wasn't. I've been coming here since 1955. It was a it's lot. It's very local. It was a lot yeah. of locals actually mm -hmm. a lot of people coming in after the game and that was kind of nice to see so that was a pleasant surprise. I think that actually the pastrami is really good. Mm -hmm. The pastrami has more of a peppery bark on the outside of mm -hmm. it. And then the curing on the pastrami is like, it's, it's more salty, more seasoned. They use both part of the briskets, both the flat and the point. It's juicy. You can also get it as a sandwich, and it's like less than 10 bucks for a sandwich, which I don't think you can get anything for less than 10 bucks in San Francisco now. Right. They even have specials every day of the week, depending on which night you go. And I looked on their website, <laughs> yeah. and I saw the specials every night. Mm -hmm. So I picked that certain Tuesday because they had the buffalo stew and that's why I went there. I thought that was cool. Did you have any dessert? The carrot cake was really good, but the dessert that I actually really liked was the Tommy's Irish coffee. The Irish cream sits on the top and kind of sinks down into the coffee. It's almost kind of like watching a lava lamp. It was a great way to finish the meal. Well, you drank your dessert. Go. There you go. That's right. <laughs> All right, Jules, your spot. Give us a quick summary. 
For a piece of San Francisco history with platters of meat at unbeatable prices, you can't beat Tommy's. All right, and Meredith? Tommy's Joint lets you go back in time to enjoy a simple, hearty meal at a great value. And San Francisco, Tommy's Joint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Tommy's Joint, it's on Geary at Van Ness in San Francisco. Telephone number is 415-775-4216. It's open every day for lunch and dinner until late. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is under $15. Meredith chooses Italian for her night out. Her favorite spot tucked away in the Rockridge neighborhood of Oakland is led by a chef born in Milan. He's serving up a fresh take on simple, elegant dishes at Bellotti Ristorante e Bottega. So we want to create a place where people come in and you always get good food no matter when. Kind of how Italians enjoy their life, you know, they just drink and eat all the time and they're very happy. Wine and food is just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And when you're done, you start. My name is Joyce Chi, I'm co-owner of Bellotti Ristorante Bottega. My name is Michele Bellotti and the chef and co-owner. The focus was obviously the pasta because from the beginning I always work on pasta since my mom in the kitchen making pasta, you know, at least twice a week. In my town, Bergamo, every family has their own recipe of the casoncelli. If you go to my neighbor in Italy, the recipe is going to be different than mine. Casoncelli means mm, bad looking shoes. Yes, because the shape reminds like a shape of old shoes in Bergamo. There was no shoes, everybody was poor, so there was like wrapping around the towel around the feet. And that was looking like funny, like uh, a little boat, I would say. I know my husband, he really enjoys seeing people eating and he see their face go from, oh, what is this? And when they put it in the mouth, they're like, that gets him every single time. He's like, this is why I do what I do. When you eat and you enjoy your glass of wine and then you forget about everything else outside this restaurant. We try to make you happy. Yeah. All right, let's talk Italian food. I know that I'm an Italian food lover. And Chef is from Milan, yes, Chef Michele. Yes, he is. He is. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's actually pretty young, but he was classically trained. Mm -hmm. My husband and I actually heard about this restaurant by word of mouth. We heard that there was this really, really good, authentic Italian restaurant that was reasonably priced in Rockridge. It, it knocked our socks off. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I mean, the atmosphere is really friendly, super friendly. It's just like a little neighborhood place. It's tiny. It's only about 10 to 12 tables plus a bar and you can have a full menu at the bar. And they treat you like your family when you walk in. Um, the food, I keep going back to this same entree and salad just because I just, I, I keep trying to explore other things and it's just so good, I don't want to miss it. Hang on, drum roll. <laughs> okay. What is it, Mary? Okay, first, it's two things. It's the Latuga salad and it's also the Agnolotti di Lidia. Mm. Uh, but first the salad, um, it's practically an entire head of fresh butter lettuce. It's the freshest lettuce you've ever had with toasted pine nuts, a little um, sprinkled grana padano, and then a, a really tasty lemon vinaigrette. The Agnolotti di Lidia, oh, it's just, it's the best. It little is pillows of love. All the pasta is handmade in-house. So these are little pillows. They are filled with a mix of, I think it's beef and pork. And then there's the sauce that it's in is a beef reduction, which is not too thick, not too thin. You kind of want to lick the bowl when you're finished. Dennis is drooling over here. I just want you yeah. to know he's, he's shaking his head. You know, like, it, It's out of this world. <laughs> it is, and I'm so happy that you picked this restaurant from start to finish, it's probably one of my favorite restaurants I've ever been to in my life. Wow, that's saying a lot. Absolutely, I don't even need to go to Italy now. I just can go <laughs> yes, to Bellotti's, and yes, I do, but that dish you're talking about, this beef reduction sauce was so rich and lovely that it almost tasted like there was caramel in it. Mm -hmm. There's so many good dishes on that menu that I had no idea what to do, and the waiter came up and he was Italian. And he gave it the, hey, you day, good morning, how you doing, you know, kind of tough guy, right? And, but, and well, I that's go, Jersey. But that's, okay. <laughs> that, that is, that's East Coast, that's, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I just said, you pick the dish. So we picked three pastas. We picked 
a beautiful appetizer, which was the tartare. Mm -hmm. Piedmontese. Yeah, um, more of a chop, delicious with the balsamic vinegar and all the goodies with it. Uh, I had exactly the same experience. And in fact, I had exactly the same experience twice because it was so good, I had to go back another oh, time. I'm so happy. Out yeah, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> outstanding. Like, the pasta, Phew. amazing. Yeah. I also yeah. had the lotuga salad. Okay. I think the chef knows what he's doing because yeah. it's just, it's so beautiful that you have to order it, but as it turns out, it's also super tasty. Did anyone just have the superb. antipasto plate? Oh, yes. Because that was a great discovery, and it was huge and beautiful. They display it. You got it, right, Jules? Oh, I did. So <laughs> it, it, it comes out on a beautiful kind of natural piece of wood, and then they've got a bunch of different selections of sliced salumi, several different creamy cheeses, um, some honey, marcona almonds, some dried fruit, and it's a meal in itself, along with a latuga salad, it would be perfect. Oh, yeah, but my favorite was actually the cassoncelli, oh. which was another stuffed pasta. That's what my husband gets. Yeah, like braised meat that's so tender, but then they also serve it with this sage and pancetta. Is that the one stuffed with pork? Yeah, it's the one stuffed with pork, and it is just so good. Mm -hmm. You have to get it. And also the pappardelle. It just comes with hand of the wood mushrooms, but it has so much beefy flavor and just deep, like umami unctuousness. Right. That, yeah. Well, and that's begging out for a bottle of wine when you have that much yes. umami and savor. And they really have a beautiful and well priced Italian wine yes. list. And our uh, server, she was so friendly to us and she guided us so well. Um, I think we spent two and a half hours there. And I feel like a, a restaurant of that size would want to turn tables, but they really want you to have a good time, and we definitely had a good time. Tiramisu, a friend of mine made tiramisu 30 years ago. We were on the golf tour. It was the best I've ever had. So I had to do a dessert, and I took one spoon of this tiramisu, and I called up my buddy in Atlanta. I said, I'm sorry, you're now in second place. <laughs> It was that incredible. The flavors, you know, maybe they use a different mascarpone and I don't know what they do. But I'd go back just for the dessert. Mm -hmm. it, it was outstanding. All right, Meredith, your spot. Wrap it up for us. Um, Belodi is the perfect balance of friendly neighborhood vibe, high quality food, and you want to keep uh, thinking about your next meal as soon as you walk out the door. All right, and Jules? The best pasta you will ever eat period. Ooh, all right. And Dennis? Authentic, delicious, value, service, everything you want in a restaurant. All right. If you would like to try Belotti Ristorante y Bottega, it's on College Avenue at Hudson in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-788-7890. It's open for lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. America has a love affair with Prosecco, and rightly so. In the northern Italian region from which it hails, it's known as the welcome wine. Juicy and quaffable, it's a bubbly that makes you happy. Prosecco is made from the Glera grape variety, and while much of Italy's production is affordable and deliciously easy drinking, there are many Proseccos that reach the highest quality levels. To seek out the best of the best, the key is to look for the words Valdobbiadene or Cartizze. The tongue-twisting name Valdobbiadene refers to a region about an hour from Venice in the shadow of the Dolomite Mountains. It's here that Prosecco shines. The rarest star in Prosecco's crown is planted on the steep hill of Cartizze, where Glera reaches glorious heights. Ah, salute. As an avid home chef, Dennis spends a lot of time in the kitchen. So on the rare occasion he ventures out for a meal, he sets the bar high. His pick? A contemporary steakhouse serving prime cuts from around the world with whiskeys to match. In San Francisco, it's called 5A5 Steak Lounge. We are known for our Japanese Miyazaki A5 Wagyu. It's definitely something one needs to try once in their life. It's the highest grade beef in the world. It has intense marbling, great flavor. It's just ever so tender. My name is Alan Chen. I'm the executive chef here at 5A5 Steak Lounge. We have high quality beef, not only domestically, but from around the world. From here in the US, we do the uh, certified Angus beef and also the uh, Greater Omaha products. And then uh, we have the Australian Wagyu. It's a crossbred, but it has the uh, perfect balance of tenderness of a uh, Wagyu plus the uh, beefiness of regular beef. I'm very proud of our um, seafood selection as well. I want to put out a menu that caters to most everyone. 
I hail from Chicago, so something that comes very natural to me and I really enjoy is getting a big fat red wine with the juiciest piece of steak. It's just absolutely fantastic. Our wine list doesn't always just focus on Napa. I try really hard to make sure there are other selections from other parts of the world that are definitely going to show relevance with chef's food. We like people to come in, you know, relax, enjoy. Everybody likes to uh, sit underneath a dome. We call it the uh, mothership. And then uh, it just gives a nice ambience. You can't really describe the uh, taste or the experience. You have to cut it, put a little piece into your mouth. It just kind of blows your mind. All right, Dennis, 5A5, it's a very descriptive name. With Starts the, with the five senses. It does. Mm -hmm. Very good. And A5 is a is the highest quality Japanese beef you can get. Wendy beef, absolutely. And so this place uh, is called a steak lounge. And when you walk in, there's kind of a uh, Japanese flair atmosphere to it. The lounge is beautiful. It's a nice place to sit down. I don't even want to get to my table yet. I want to sit around and have a really nice malt scotch or something. And I'm a steak and potatoes kind of guy. And if you love beef, they have a dish. It's four cuts of A5, and it is not cheap if you want to go that route. It's about $575. But if you won the lotto, that is what you need to order. Right. That night, I had a 50-50 uh, Tajima, and I think it was a Holstein cattle. And it was interesting because when I saw this, I went, why would you put a sauce on such a beautiful cut of beef? And it didn't hide the flavor of the beef at all. It brought it up to another level and it was absolutely delicious. It's one of the top three steaks I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. My wife had sea bass and I didn't know sea bass could be that good. It's the red meat yes. of fish, you know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, see, I just love there the show. <laughs> this is so much fun. And, <laughs> and it's been there for nine years. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a long running restaurant, which is a hard thing to do in San Francisco. No question. Yeah, it's very sophisticated. I mean, it feels like a place where you should go in and have a proper cocktail. So I had something, I think it was called a Voyager, mm -hmm. and it was a rum-based drink that had Madeira and bitters in it too, so it was this really interesting balance that it was tasty with a little twist. It was really Well, good. and they do, I'm just gonna take a moment to talk about that whiskey program that they have there is astounding. It really is one of the best whiskey programs I've seen in the country. You pay the price for them, but they're amazing. Mm -hmm. And you can just sit in the lounge and have something you to can. eat, and yes, you don't can. have there's to go into the Yeah, there's definitely no. a vibe going yeah. on in the lounge. Yeah, absolutely. I think lounge is very apt word of describing it. Right. It was cool. It was, it was really fun, and uh, the food is really rich and tasty. You hear that people talk about A5 beef, and they say, oh, it's, it's just like butter. It is like butter. Mm -hmm. It's like butter. Yeah, it, it's that good, and the beef flavor is so pronounced, and it's not like any beef I've ever had here stateside. We also had the bone-in uh, ribeye, which is a massive, it's like probably a pound and a half of meat, enough for all of us to split. In fact, there were four of us, and we were kind of worried about, you know, oh, it's expensive beef, but the portions, aside from the A5, are actually pretty fair. And it comes with this uh, borsan cheese on top with a sage butter. Mm -hmm. The server recommended that we order it medium rare. And, you know, I kind of told him to back off and say, hey guy, I'm a steak guy, you know, I like mine rare, I want it bloody, you know, and I kind of wish that I listened to him on both of the steaks. The yeah. Tajima 50-50, um, it's so fatty that you kind of actually want a little bit to render off and to like um, get more of that sear flavor on it. <laughs> that, that aside, I have to say the steak was um, pretty good, especially paired with the sides that they have there. They've got this mac and cheese. It's a truffle mac that is just so cheesy, so gooey. It comes out bubbling in this um, cast iron skillet. So I also had the 50-50, um, which was delicious. It was beautiful, which was good because it was pricey. Okay. Our first courses were delicious. I had the carrot ginger soup that day, which was just perfect. It had a little bit of to it. It was savory and creamy and um, a little bit spicy. And then my husband ordered the beet salad, which was probably the most beautiful beet salad I'd seen. It was sliced really thinly, multicolored beets, almost like a beet carpaccio. Really light, really beautiful. We shared it. It was excellent. Any desserts? I had yeah. actually my favorite dish of the night, the creme brulee trio. This yeah. was a trio of three different creme brulees, um, a ginger creme brulee, a uh, matcha green tea creme brulee and then a black sesame creme brulee. And it was so perfectly brulee on the top. Right. After having such a rich meal, it was so nice to have something so clean mm. and uh, tasty. I ordered something that was, I think, called 
seven degrees of coffee. It had a coffee panna cotta in the middle, and that was the best thing about it, which was quite good. And that would have been fine all by itself. Okay. And I would say it was very ambitious. Yeah. Well, your restaurant, wrap it up for us. Uh, if you want a phenomenal meal when it's steak, I would have to give 585 the number one steakhouse in San Francisco, or maybe ever with the A5. All right, and Meredith? 585 is a swanky, sophisticated mm -hmm. spot for steak lovers, but best if you can go on an expense account. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Jules? For extremely tasty Japanese beef, at a cost, but really good, 585. All right, if you would like to try 5A5 Steak Lounge, it's on Jackson Street at Battery in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-989-2539. It's open for dinner every night. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $120. I have to thank my great guests on this week's show. Jules Vu, who took us back in time to the classic Tommy's Joint in San Francisco. And Meredith Perry, who can't get enough of the savory, saucy agnolotti at Bellotti Ristorante Bottega in Oakland. Finally, Dennis Trixler, who revels in red meat at 5A5 Steak Lounge in San Francisco. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Chuck Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everybody. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Chuck Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has thousands of surfaces in stock now. Surfaces. Selection. Service. IRG at MarbleCompany.com. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with eight Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Sutter Health CPMC announcing its newly opened Mission Bernal Hospital with all private rooms and comprehensive labor and delivery services. SutterHealth.org slash Mission Bernal. Redwood Credit Union, community banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Business and personal, online and mobile, plus nationwide ATMs. Banking for people who call this place home.